Begin by removing the maxi cable's outer jacket. This step is critical. The goal is to expose the conductors without nicking or damaging the insulation. Do not use a utility knife. One proven method is to use the Gorilla UF stripper tool. Measure and remove about a forearm's length of jacket. Position the cable in the tool. Apply steady, even pressure and pull through in one smooth motion. The tool is designed to cut only the jacket, leaving the conductors fully protected. Trim off the excess jacket and ensure the insulation is intact before continuing. Another method available on some maxi cables is the embedded pull cord. To use it, make a small angled cut to expose the cord, then pull it firmly along the jacket. Peel back the jacket to fully clear the conductors. For an inline splice, strip about an inch and a quarter of insulation from each conductor using the correct gauge slot on the stripper. Cut cleanly to avoid nicking the copper. Twist the conductors together using lineman's pliers for a strong mechanical bond. Add the IVM module lead by wrapping it securely over the splice in a clockwise manner. Then trim all wires to a uniform length of about 5 eighths of an inch. Twist on the nut until tight and tug on each wire to ensure it's locked in. Then insert the splice completely into the WC100 tube. Verify that it is fully seated. Bend the wires to either side of the connector. Use a fingertip to smear the dielectric gel around the entry point and between the wires, making sure there are no gaps or voids. Close the strain relief until it clicks and tug on each wire to ensure it's locked in. For an end of line splice, follow the same process. Strip the cable and IVM module lead. Twist the lead along the conductor in a clockwise position. Then trim to 5 eighths of an inch. Apply the wire nut and tug on each wire to ensure it's locked in. For non-two-wire splices, such as between an IVM sen and a flow sensor, or an IVM out and a DC latching solenoid, smaller gauge wires can make this difficult. Use a thin, non-conductive tool to press it in place. Bend the wires to either side of the connector. And again, use your fingertip to work the gel thoroughly around the conductors. Then close the strain relief and tug on each wire to ensure it's locked in. Following these steps ensures a reliable, durable splice within a valve box.